testimony of if God is for you, who can be against you? Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. Um, first off, shout out to the uh, Boston Celtics on a tremendous win, an amazing defensive performance down the stretch from, from Smart, Tatum, and all those guys, and the uh, Nuggets as well, staying alive. Uh, but on to bo- the NBA players have been great, haven't they? Uh, but on to boxing, though. Um, and 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 we're gonna spend today's episode on the Canelo Alvarez lawsuit. Um, this doesn't seem to be going away. Uh, and and there's a lot going on right now with the zone. Um, the zone is owned by a guy named Len Blavnik, who has a net worth of about thirty billion dollars. Um, he's one of the second or third richest men in the UK. So he's got he, he dumped the money. Um, he, he he hired John Skipper, who who comes from ESPN originally to run boxing, and they've basically given Eddie Hearn a blank check to make the best fights in boxing. They haven't done that. Um, Eddie Hearn says he's happy. Prior to the pandemic, Eddie Hearn said that, that that they were all skipper was happy with the state of the, the subscriptions, how they were doing. Um, you know, Eddie Hearn's also a salesman. I I, I don't know if that's true, uh, but they haven't made you know. And I'm not here to knock the zone or anything like that. I like the zone. They changed the way we watch boxing. Um, we get to watch a ton of international boxing. Unfortunately, it really hasn't transcended. Um, you know, the hardcores have it, and, and of course, it hasn't crossed over to the casual boxing fan, the casual sporting fan. Um, so he was given a blank check. Eddie Hearn was given a blank check to make the best fights in boxing, and despite that, he hasn't been able to do that. They bought for Charlo a lot of money, Tank Davis a lot of money, and they just haven't been able to crack it, they haven't been able to make a ton of money. Um, so it really has worked out prior to the pandemic. And now, enter the COVID-19 pandemic, there's really been no sports in March, April, May, June. And now, you know, June, July, August. You know, that is a long time to go without much boxing. Um, you know, Kovalev, uh, Kovalev, Canelo was, it's late. It's late. I'm in Texas. It's it's already after midnight. It's almost 1 a.m. Um, Canelo was supposed to fight Billy Joe Saunders um, this spring. That fell apart. and. Now, Canelo's name has been linked to a litany of fighters. None of that has come to fruition. Uh, it's becoming realistic that Kovalev, Kovalev again, Canelo may not fight that. Um, Canelo may not fight at all in 2020. Um, you know, fights, and and here's why: DAZN wants him to take a 50 percent pay cut because he's not fighting a premier fighter. We're going to get into that in just a second. Um, He's agreed to take a 30% pay cut, which I don't think he should do. I think that's insane. I wouldn't take any pay cut. Like Terrence Crawford, no, I'm not. Mm -mm, Nope. mm -mm, No, sir. Not taking one penny less. Um, They approved Caleb Smith. They approved uh, Billy Joe. They approved uh, Jason Quigley, but not as premier names. Just like Jacobs and... Kovalev weren't premier names, and Rocky Billy obviously wasn't a premier name either. So this all looks as we haven't got any premier names. Well, there's kind of a a a a moving goalpost there. What's a premier name? Well, here's what they consider a premier name. His 47 year old promoter Oscar De La Hoya is a premier name, and then two UFC guys, 
uh, Kabab, Khabib, and I don't know the UFC, but there were two UFC guys, Med, but whatever. Those were the the, the premier fighters. Well, boxing fans don't want to say uh, boxing fans don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. I don't want to pay for that. I don't know who you think is gonna. It's insane, right? Those are Triple G is not a premier name. Jamal Troll is not a premier name. So there was no premier names in boxing besides his 47-year-old promoter who hasn't fought in 10 years. Think about that, right? So they're so that's what's holding it up. They will pay him his full quote 35 if he fights one of those guys. Well, those aren't real fights, and they're not giving anyone else the title of premier. So they're only offering 17 and a half or 50 percent of his purse of his guarantee. And Canelo's saying absolutely not. And I don't blame him. Um, in the contract, Canelo was given kind of like the last right of refusal, right? He can approve or disapprove of any fight that he wants. That was in it. So even if um, the zone wants one of the UFC guys and he says, no, I want Jamal Charlo or Caleb Plant or Quigley or, or whoever, he gets the right to, he gets the right um, to to agree, he gets the right to, to make that fight. It's he, get, Canelo Alvarez gets the final say. Well, that's huge because that means he gets to make the fight. You gave him that power, and now they don't want to do it, or now they're trying to back their way out of it, saying only these absurd, ridiculous fights, Canelo versus De La Hoya or Canelo versus two UFC guys, those are the only premier fights. So Canelo versus Triple G. Which is the fight they want is not a premier fight. So will that mean he'd only get seventeen and a half million dollars to fight Triple G? Because that's what it sounds like in the contract. So Canelo's got considerable beef. Now look, DeZone and Len Blavnik could dump more money into DeZone, but they're not gonna. Right? They wanted this to be like the Amazon of sports, like right? you know the the uh, Netflix of sports. The, the all in one source for all sports. Well, here's the problem with streaming sports. Once it's not live anymore, it has very little value, right? Like I just watched the NBA playoffs. There's not any appeal to watch that tomorrow because we already know the outcome. Only a really, really hardcore basketball head would want to go back and watch a basketball game. There's not enough of them to support that, that kind of service. Boxing doesn't really get covered by the mainstream media. You can avoid media and then go watch it, which we all do, and go watch it later. You know, I watch all the uh, ESPN Plus cards from overseas. I watch, you know, anything basically overseas, I watch later for the most part. You know, there there are exceptions, obviously. Um, And it's okay because in the U.S., boxing doesn't get covered by the mainstream media. I don't get updates on my phone on who won the fight. So you, you turn up your Twitter app and you just, you know, you watch it when you, when you when you get to it, and that's fine. So Skipper basically decided that they were going to be the boxing business. They were going to be boxing in USA. They were they were going to make the biggest fights, and they were going to mainstream boxing, um, and, and fans were going to love it because they wouldn't have to pay for all these pay per views anymore, and they would get all their boxing on design. Well, it's a good theory. It's a good plan. It hasn't worked out. Um, they haven't been able to really work with any of the Al Heyman fighters outside of a couple of handful of. Uh, you know, examples. Um, there were exception with Andy Ruiz, um, but really, I mean, uh, Al Heyman, his fighters are so loyal to Al Heyman. It's not something we're accustomed to in boxing. So they don't have big fights. They don't. Even, they, they they haven't made the best fights in boxing like they thought they were going to make, and they don't even have a Canelo fight. The zone's in trouble. How much more money does Blavnik? Who has all the money in the world, but how much does he want to keep dumping into this? He's dumped a lot into it. Maybe he wants to cut his losses. Guys, the zone USA might be in trouble. And I don't know what that does to, to how we watch boxing. I don't know where these fighters go, what happens here. Um, but the zone USA, not that Blavnik is going to go bankrupt or anything like that, because he could lose all of his money and not know it's missing. Yeah, he can lose. I mean, he can lose all the money he's put into the zone and not even know the, you know, the money he's missing. That's how rich he is. <clears throat> you know, he can lose. You know, the zone just laid off two percent of their workforce. Um, but I'm saying every penny that Bladnick put into the zone could go missing. He wouldn't know it was gone. It'd be like me, or you, you losing twenty bucks. Like, well, oh, well, that sucks. 
I didn't know it was gone. Um, so who's going to blink first? I don't know. I mean, maybe does it, it like if, if the zone is going to just fold, well, then they could be done. I, I don't know what the future holds for the zone USA. Um, I don't think it includes paying Canelo Alvarez $35 million a fight. I think that's kind of done, which is where the breach of contract comes in. That's the guarantee. Now they're trying to get out of it by saying this premier thing. I don't think it's going to work. I'm not a lawyer. You should consult with a lawyer. I don't know. Um, but this is gonna this is gonna get ugly. I mean, I don't think Canelo's fighting in 2020. They're still talking about it. it's possible he could fight in November. You know, we're already almost halfway through September. I don't know that that's gonna happen. Um, they said they would approve Caleb Smith, um, and there were a couple other names, but not as premier fighters. So does that mean he's getting 17 and a half? I don't know. Um, I, I wouldn't if he should not take that kind of pay cut. I mean, look, Canelo can do what he wants. If he wants to fight for, you know, a, a, a you know a million dollars, I, I guess. Do it. If that's what you want to do. But I think you're crazy, right? Don't do that. Without Canelo, there's not much intrigue in boxing, right? Like I have neighbors um, who don't watch boxing. They watch boxing twice a year when Canelo fights. Canelo's a star. Canelo has that kind of power. And, and I had a disagreement with Steve Kim on Twitter on this, and, and he was saying, you know, Canelo's not a huge pay-per-view star. Well, all of his pay per views, all in all, his average almost a million pay per views for all, you know, I think there were eight of them. There were nine of them. And it comes into just under a million pay per views. He did 2.2 million pay per view sales with Mayweather. Yes, Mayweather was an A side, but Mayweather was an A side with huge names, household names like Marquez, Shane Mosley, Miguel Cotto. None of those came close to doing what Canelo did. Why? Because Canelo's a star. Canelo's the only guy in boxing right now that can do a million pay per views, but he's not on pay per view anymore. He's on his own. Or he was on his own. Is he on his own anymore? That could be done. Uh, you know, I'm thinking if Canelo can get out of this, that guy's got so much money, he may take a stab at his own boxing service. Just a hunch. Um. So we're gonna, where we stand right now is not much has changed. Um, this is going to court. They're trying to get uh, – a summary judgment from the judge. They want to push this through because, you know, obviously Canelo's 30. He's in the absolute prime of his career right now, the peak of his career. Th these things can get tedious. They can go two, three years in court. Obviously Canelo doesn't want to, he can't, doesn't want to waste his career giving away two, three years. Um, so I, I think this is going to get pushed through. And I don't know. Um, the zone is making fights. Um, there's, Tentatively, Daniel Jacobs and Boo Boo Andre. Andre was one of the other names that were approved to fight Canelo. Um, later in the year, we'll see if that happens. Um, but I don't know. It, it may be the end of the road for the zone, which would be unfortunate uh, because I, I, I really liked it. I like the service. I like the apps. They give us a lot of boxing. 32 uh, uh, fight nights, boxing fight nights a, a year. That's, you know, do the math. That's. I don't know, three a month, roughly. That's good. That's a lot of boxing. That's more than HBO gave us. That's more than Showtime gave us back in the day, right? Like, that's a lot of boxing. Um, I hope they get it saved. I hope they work it out. It's just, it, that is a lot of money to pay Canelo, and they're not getting their return on their investment. Now, that's a bad decision. And I think that's because they didn't hire any boxing people, right? They hired a guy from ESPN who knows American sports, but boxing is so niche and it's so different, Right? Trying to make money in boxing is totally different, right? There's no unifying body. There's no nucleus like baseball has major league baseball, basketball has the NBA, football has the NFL. Um, there's there's no one nucleus that you have to agree with. There's sanctioning bodies. There's you know uh, the, the, the sanctioning bodies, the promoters. There's a litany of obstacles to overcome, and none of them knew this, right? They they if the zone wants to do this, they have to basically gut it. And hire boxing people. I'm available. If you want to pay me millions of dollars to, to do what Skipper does, um, I can do that. I always say that. Like, Roger Goodell, the commissioner of the NFL, is worse at his job than anyone else in America is at their job, right? Like, so whatever you do, if you're a construction worker, if you work at McDonald's, if you're a dentist, no matter how bad you are, right? Like, if you're the worst dentist in the world, the worst auto mechanic in the world. You're still better at your job than Roger Goodell is at his. John Skipper gives him a run for his money. That's how bad they are, right? Like they just don't understand 
Boxing is unlike any other sport. It, it's so niche. It's so filthy. And it, there's, there's, it's, it's a moving goalpost. The, the, you can't nail it to the ground. And I, I think half the people involved in it don't want boxing to get much bigger than it is because it stays underground. It stays low key, right? And it's, it's like the mafia. Once John Gotti put it on the cover of every magazine and every newspaper in New York, it, it becomes too big, and it, you put a spotlight on it, and then it, they take it down. Boxing likes to operate underneath the radar. Just small enough. It's not going to die. There are too many hardcore fight fans, but it's also never going to go mainstream, so you're never going to have to worry about taking it down or getting too big like, like what John Gotti did to the mafia. So... I mean, boxing in many ways, my my, my uh, co-host calls it the red light district. I call it the mafia. Just keep it quiet. Keep it underground. And those who enjoy it are going to continue to enjoy it. It's like an underground poker game. That, and that's what boxing is. Um, so, it, I mean, basically, it, it, own, and I don't think it's a bad idea. They just hired bad personnel. And, like, if you look at bad teams in sports, the Knicks, the Cleveland Browns, what do they have? Bad personnel. You know, I'm not saying the fighters are bad. The zone fighters are good. But I'm saying in the front office, they've hired all the wrong people. They have to gut it. They have to hire boxing people. And they, and they have to reset this. I mean, they paid Sugar Ray Leonard. A legendary fighter, a ton of money to do color commentary. If you remember when it, when they first came out, he's terrible at it. I know he's a great. People love him. He's a great fighter, one of the great fighters of all time. U.S. Olympic gold medalist, um, multi division world champion, great guy. You know, but he's terrible at color commentary. You know, and they, gave, they they dumped a lot of money into him. Is it none of the moves they made made any sense? None of them were any good. Um, the zone's in trouble. Golden Boy's in trouble. And Canelo wants to get paid, and that's basically where we stand right now. Um, but let me know what you guys think. I, I'm going to have continuous updates on this. I also did a, a open records request uh, with the U.S. Uh, federal court uh, in, in, in Central California, which is the district court that it's in, for the uh, all 24 pages of the complaint. There's 10 complaints covered up in 24 pages. I, I, I put in a, an open records request to get that. I don't know when, because it doesn't go through California. It's a, it's a federal court, so it goes to the U.S. District of Court. I don't know how long it's going to take them to get me back. It was $12. I, I happily paid that to get all 24 pages. Um, once that comes in, I, I'll open it up and share it with y'all. Um, they have to send it to me. It's just a matter of when, right? The law says in a reasonable amount of time. I don't know what that means, right? That could mean anything. It's six months reasonable. It's a week reasonable. I don't know. But as soon as it comes in, I'll share it with y'all. Um, and maybe we'll get some more information on this. You know, we can go over it in detail. But let me know what you guys think. Is is the zone in trouble? Is Golden Boy in trouble? Uh, how long is this holdout going to last? Um, are we going to see any more Golden Boy boxing? Because where they are right now is the zone says they're not going to, until they get a Canelo fight, they're not going to tell about, they're not going to stream any more Golden Boy cards at all. I don't know if you're Hector Tanahara, Virgil Ortiz, Ryan Garcia, Rashidi Ellis. I, I don't know how that makes you feel, uh, but you're going to be wanting to, 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 to move out and, and find another promoter, I would think. Um, it, it, it's it's a mess right now over on that side of the street. We'll call it the Golden Boy Zone Canelo side of the street. It, it, it's a disaster right now. But when does this come to an end? Does it end amicably? Um, they just get Canelo a fight and move on and open up the check. I mean, checkbook, all these things are possible. I, I don't know what we're going to do or what's going to happen here. Uh, but this is going to unfold. And I think it's going to unfold by the end of the year. I don't think Canelo fights this year, which is majorly major league disappointment. But I, that's what it is. I mean, contract disputes during worldwide pandemics are ugly. I don't think Terrence Crawford is going to fight this year either. Those are the two best fighters in the world, arguably. Neither one of them are going to fight this year. That's not great news for boxing fans. It's not great news for boxing, uh, but that's the, the ugly world we live in, which is why, I mean, this sport is just so unique, right? Like in basketball, right? Going into the season, you probably thought the Bucks, Lakers, and Clippers were the best teams in basketball. They said, we're not going to play any games this year. It's like, <laughs> actually, you are, right? Like, you're definitely going to. But in, in boxing, you, okay, they're not going to fight this year. There's not much you can do about it. Um, and, and this is all over, you know, oh, well, it's over money, but a pr premier fighter status is, is, is really what, what's hanging this up. And that premier fight is, like I said, two UFC guys and his, and Canelo's 47 year old promoter. 
It's getting ugly, guys. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, remember to like and subscribe. Um, share this on all forms of social media. Um, you can find me at 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, all from social media. Uh, my weekly article on uh, FightPost.UK, uh, uh, on a weekly, bi weekly podcast uh, with Matt the Hips Hunter and UK Rob on Mixed Combat Radio. That's on all, uh, all services uh, from Texas to the world. Thank you, and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.